Hey guys, so my name is Dennis Dang. I'm a student here at Fullstack, and today I'm going to be giving my tech talk on CAPTCHA, aka how the internet knows you're not a robot. So I'm just going to share my screen and get start playing. So I guess as an overview, we're going to go over a couple different things today. What is a CAPTCHA and how it works? Why is it important? Different types of CAPTCHAs, and then how to integrate CAPTCHA with Node. So I guess starting out, CAPTCHA actually stands for Completely Automated Public Turing Test to Tell Computers and Humans Apart. I'm sure you could all have guessed that, but this is actually a backronym. So they apparently came up with the word first and then decided to fill it in with this incredible acronym. This term was actually first coined by Carnegie Mellon researchers in 2003 in a research paper that kind of overviewed how CAPTCHAs work and kind of the applications of CAPTCHAs. And then in this paper, they described CAPTCHA as a three main characteristics. So it, it really has the characteristic that current software can't solve it accurately or quickly. It should be easily solvable by humans, and it doesn't rely on novelty. So if you look at the bottom right, a simple checkbox that says, I'm not a robot, technically doesn't qualify as a CAPTCHA, because even though it's easily solvable by humans, uh, current software can solve it pretty quickly. And if it can't, it usually is because it hasn't encountered it before. And this is kind of where the novelty comes in. And so continuing on, CAPTCHAs typically rely on problems that are kind of deemed hard in the field of artificial intelligence. And this has a couple of benefits. Mainly, it gives you a foundational layer of security, and it kind of gives you different, I guess, points where you could have different problems if your main problem fails. And so you have a backup pool of hard problems that are similar in security, and also allows for the advancement of AI when solved. This kind of occurs in twofold, either someone is actively trying to solve CAPTCHAs, and thus they kind of streamline their process, and this could be utilized in other fields of AI, or they have an actual technique that they've already developed, and they would like to test it on real-world cases, and thus CAPTCHA provides you a large set of data that kind of gives you, I guess, real-world applications. And so a typical problem that kind of arises in AI is image recognition, and we can imagine why it's so difficult, because mainly due to the like huge number of variations for like a photo, you can have a incredible amount of variables and kind of as a little I guess like thought game if you wanted to describe what a bird is to someone who's never seen a bird and have them be able to recognize it how would you go about doing it which is kind of difficult because you could start and say hey a bird has like a beak or feathers or maybe it can fly but if you think about programming it that's actually like impossible because you have all these like rules that it would follow and so a better technique would be to kind of show someone a bunch of images of birds, have them come up with their own kind of concept of a bird and apply that. And this is actually what neural networks do. And this is something that's been uh, utilized a lot lately and kind of advanced in terms of image recognition. And this allows for solving of certain captures that were deemed unsolvable before, at least in terms of processing power. And so I guess moving on, why would you ever use CAPTCHA? And so there are a couple of different reasons, but mainly it's really just to kind of prevent people from spamming your website, either in the form of comment spam or technically stealing email addresses, or even kind of just trying to steal your password through dictionary attacks. But anytime you would ever have to verify whether a human is actually real, it would be a good application of CAPTCHA. And so I guess continuing on, there are different types of CAPTCHAs, but mainly they all fall under three like same branches. And the first is a text-based CAPTCHA, which is, as we see, basically a word that kind of gets transformed into an image. And then from there, you can use different techniques to kind of obscure the image from computers. And thus, it's difficult for computers to solve, but easily solved by the end user. It's kind of more accessible to visually impaired users compared to like image-based, but it's also still somewhat difficult to see. And it's easily generated, but not as secure as other CAPTCHA types, mainly due to the fact that Text has, I guess, more, I guess, analyzable information compared to, at least more easily analyzable information compared to an image. And in itself, it has various subtypes, uh, recognizing what text is showing, having mathematical equations, and then having simple logic puzzles. And so the other two types are image-based and audio-based captures. And then image-based allows for really robust security, but it's not as accessible, obviously, it's a visually impaired users and requires an image bank which kind of adds overhead to the system and could potentially be another fail, failure point. Audio-based is technically the least used, but it's accessible to almost all visually impaired users. And then it's kind of more involved than other forms of CAPTCHA. So it's somewhat 
used as a backup. So more conventional captures typically give you an image or they give you a text and they say that you can have an option to hear it as audio. And so the last type of captcha isn't even really a type of captcha, but it's more of a, like a concept. It's called reCAPTCHA and it's an extension of the captcha system offered by Google. It's probably one of the more popular captcha systems in the world. And originally, if we look at the top right, it allowed for digitization of books. So it would give you a word that was known in the first, I guess, image, and they would give you an unknown word. And then it would assume that if you match the first word, the second word is correct. And this kind of led to these more complicated uh, styles of reCAPTCHA. But currently, for Google, they use it a lot for street view. So if you kind of ever, ever clicked on one of these, they ask you to select different streets and, I guess, different street signs. And this is kind of used in their analysis now. But there's actually a kind of a cool thing that they've been doing lately, where sometimes when you click on the I'm not a robot box, it doesn't even ask you anything. It just automatically assumes you're not a robot. And this is based on supposedly it analyzing either your browser history or maybe your movements on the page, as well as a bunch of other data Google collects to kind of determine that you're not a robot. And it's really cool, but obviously this is all theorized since a lot of their information is proprietary and it's kind of key to the security in terms of keeping this info private. And so I guess the last thing to note is on capture security. So the in security of any individual capture system changes very rapidly. So even for reCAPTCHA by Google, which is like a state of the art uh, system, there was a paper that was published actually just this year that went over step-by-step -step how to attack and break the system. And it gave you a lot of details. And essentially it said that it could accurately solve 71% of all image recapture challenges within only 19 seconds. And this was on like conventional machines, not on supercomputers. So this is like a real kind of application that could actually be used in the real world. And so it kind of speaks to like where capture is heading and how it will be used. And I feel like in terms of um, the problems that are currently being solved, it needs to kind of either change how it's being utilized or it kind of needs to just drastically alter how capture is Capture works fundamentally to be able to keep up with these growing changes. And so I guess finally, we're just gonna go over how to like integrate Captcha with like an existing node application. And it's pretty simple. Uh, I use the Google reCAPTCHA API. And there are really three main steps. You just register your site, you integrate the front end, and then you integrate the back end. So I'm just gonna show you a little bit of how that works. So basically you go to the site and uh, go to their admin page, and then it will give you options to either add uh, like an app or the domain. I already have an app created. So basically, the site gives you some data on analytics, but all it really requires is the site key and the secret key. And it gives you steps on client-side, server-side integration. And all you would do is you would place this inside of a form, and basically, it would when you submit that form, it would tell you whether or not it's been verified or not. And so I have a little app running that's very simple. All it has is a reCAPTCHA and a test that pops up when you aren't verified, it says, are you a robot or not? And then you can verify it. And so this is running using React and I guess Node in a very simple little app that kind of has three components. It has index.html, uh, main.jsx, and app.js. So index we'll start with index.html. And basically all it does is it loads bundle.js using Webpack. And then it has a couple different style sheets in jQuery just to load the toast. And I guess the main part is the front end for main.jsx, which all it has is essentially your React DOM render and the test component. And the test component is very simple. It utilizes a reCAPTCHA, I guess, NPM library that's a wrapper for the component. So this kind of gives you a bit more options in terms of like controlling how your form submits. So instead of automatically submitting, I can actually keep it from uh, like redirecting pages and things like that. And basically all it does is you add this reCAPTCHA component to your web app, and then I guess a button if you want to test on how it works. And then anytime the reCAPTCHA changes itself, it will update the state with a gcaptcha response. And then when you press the button, it would actually post to the test route. And so as we see right now, if you just try to click it, it should fail. But basically once you actually uh, go through and go for the reCAPTCHA and you click on it's all these storefronts uh, and it verifies, then you're good to go. And once you press test, then it should go back with a message from the backend. And the backend works kind of similarly. So basically the backend is very simple. It has a body parser and just a simple get request for the index.html. And it's a single post route 
where you hit the test route with your data. And basically, if you haven't solved the capture yet, uh, it will have an empty body, and then you fail, and then you res uh, respond with a failure. But if it passes, you have to create a URL with both the secret key as well as the response. And then you do a get request to Google's API endpoint. And basically, it'll send back a response with a success or failure. And based on that, you can do different things. Uh, one thing to note that Google kind of doesn't explain in their documentation is that on the server side, it has to be, they actually say you can send a post request. But in this case, I found that you can only send a get request since the post request doesn't actually like uh, work in this case. And so if you want to do it, you have to form the URL using the parameters. But in this case, it sends back on success a success key and then a message. And basically, back on the front end, it kind of handles that a little toast. And so that's it for the app. Uh, this is basically my entire tech talk. And it kind of just gives you an overview on CAPTCHA and how it works and maybe how you would integrate it into a Node app.